15. And uh, I'm call the Board of Selectmen to order. And, uh, and I would also like to do call the uh, Economic Development Commission to order. And, uh, and we have uh, a quorum. And from the two voting members, they would, uh, you could be voting for Fred. And you could be voting for, let's see. Who, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Do a pledge. Pledge of allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Bob, I'll let you lead off. It's your letter that's more or less initiated this. All right, all right. I can uh, certainly lead it off, and then uh, we can go kind of back and forth a little bit. Um, I'd just like to open it by thanking everybody for coming. That's great to see uh, as many faces out there, and uh, we don't usually get that many at Economic Development Commission. It's not that exciting, but uh, thank you for coming. And, uh, and I would... Um, like maybe if we could introduce the uh, people who are here. Certainly. So could we just go around the room and? and <laughs> <laughs> well, you want to know who we are? Whoa! Wait a minute now. We're supposed to be able to get out of here quickly in case things get too hot. We can do that. Come on. Irene, you can. Irene Haynes, Economic Development Commission. Uh, I'm Jim Fanema, EDC. Bob Kasner, I chair it. Emmett Lyman, first selectman. Karen Wheeler, Secretary. Rob Smith, Selectman. Don Bergeron, EDC. Ed Blasher. Eric Hill. Andrew Tierney, Town Manager, Town of Hebron, and Chairman of the Board of Chattanooga. You're going to be next, Don. Uh. Oh, I'm going to be next. <laughs> You're next. Don Mitchell, I'm Director of Health, Chattanooga Health District. I'm Jess Stone, President of the East Town Business Association. I'm Laura DeQuilla. I'm the president of East Haven Ambulance Association. Zach Jessick. <laughs> 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 All right, Steve. Steve Knock, Chief Sanitarian, Chicago Health District. Jim Ventress, Land Use Administrator. Bob Bierfleury, Sasha Thank you. And uh, I'd just like to um, stress that uh, basically what we're trying to do here is to give it a little idea as to what's going on with the health district, what's right, what's wrong. Uh, certainly going to give out some points that economic development has found over the years that's been going on. And I think that uh, we're trying to see what we can do to have better health services in the town of East Chatham. Um, EDC has been basically discussing the Chatham Health and their performance. Uh, and it started really back in uh, 2016 um, and October 6, 2016, uh, we, we started discussing the services that were being given by Chatham Health and some of the businesses that have had and shown over time that the performance is not up to what they feel it should be. Um, so it went from October the 6th until December the 6th, and then on, on that date, we basically... Um, confirmed that uh, it was asked by the board uh, whether we were too late to do anything. Now, this is 2016 to do anything with possibly uh, getting a new proposal uh, for health services. Uh, and, and basically, at, at that time, it was confirmed that uh, by that time, it would be too late to talk about uh, making any changes in 2016. So now, running forward, um, Basically, the next time the minute showed up with a discussion of it, or it was on the agenda, was November of 2017. And, uh, and basically, at that time, um, the representative from Chatham Health had uh, resigned. And, uh, and at the time, we didn't have anybody in the office uh, as a regular staff person, um, as we had had uh, when Liz Davison was there. She was basically in the office and was there and available to the businesses and to the public. Um, by the time we got to December uh, of 17, um, it was on our agenda again. And at that time, we brought it to the attention of the first selectman. And, and basically, 
Mr. Uh, Lyman basically said that he had uh, spoken with uh, Mr. Mitchell and Mr. Tierney regarding concerns about Chatham Health performances, and they both expressed their strong concerns and interest in correcting any problems. Um, I think then, then basically that went along for a while, and now we've got into April of, of 2018, and the businesses had ex again expressed uh, problems and dissatisfaction with Chatham Health District. And Mr. Lyman requested that specific examples be given to him, and Mr. Staley uh, offered to do that and, uh, and sent him some ex examples of business people around the town who were having problems. In September, we uh, was asked to, the, the board basically asked to draft a letter um, to Chatham Health and request their fees and for some procedural matters. And by the time we got to October, um, there was a subcommittee set up, and, and at that time, we decided that we would rather have a meeting with Don Mitchell and, uh, and basically have a one-on-one, -on -one. and then we could also request uh, basically some financials, which was always a question out there as to how much money it was costing the town, how much fee income was coming in, and where the fee income was coming from. And we had the meeting with uh, Don, and, uh, and, and certainly the subcommittee learned that uh, we were basically the town of East Haddam was paying a fee of $105,000 a year. Um, that was for the 2018 year. And there was $24,000 collected in service fees uh, from the businesses and uh, landowners of the town of East Haddam. I think that... Um, in the meantime, there has been other discussions and other things going on, but uh, it just, what we're trying to do is to show that this has been going on for a period of time um, and that it seems like there has been uh, lapses in how the performance is being accepted by the townspeople, particularly the businesses out there. And certainly with, uh, I would say, the, the biggest area that we found was food service. Uh, food service has always been a problem, um, and I think that uh, it seems like that is an area that um, needs to take and have a little bit of attention, needs to take and have a better education of the people who have to deal with food service and what to expect and when to expect it and, uh, and basically have something so that also, from the economic development standpoint, that we know what is being expected of our food services, and are we going to inspect them once a quarter, once a, twice a year, once once a year? Uh, where, where, what is the rotation as far as having some inspections and food service? And I think the businesses would like to know that. And I think that also the other thing we've found is consistency. That uh, when you have over like we've had for these past three years. Um, basically, we're having different people walking through that office. And that always is more difficult um, to deal with uh, rather than if you have one person who's there and we get to know that person, we get to know whatever the hours are going to be and when they're going to be in the office. They're going to be in the office in the mornings and they do their inspections the afternoon. We kind of get a, a feeling and, and, and have some consistency as to how is it going to work as well as, as what time and uh, is people going to be in the office. So I'm just going to open up basically with a couple of, of questions if it's okay. I'd like to direct them to you, Don, if it's okay. Um, Emma, is that okay if I proceed this way? This, I mean, we, this can, it's going to have to be fairly informal. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. And, uh, and that's, I think, the way we... Yeah. Certainly, you're going to set this up. I thought we could start off. I could ask a couple of questions. We're going to go around the table, ask mm -hmm. a couple of questions. Anybody in the audience who wants to ask a question, we can certainly do that through the chat. Yeah. And comments. Yeah, and comments. Absolutely. And um, um, I'm just going to start off now with the food service. Uh, <coughs> what is the, let's say right now, how often do we inspect uh, our restaurants, our food uh, uh, grocery stores, uh, whatever, um, and then we'll, we can get into the basically the 
food trucks and that sort of thing. But I think basically with the restaurants and, and food service. Food services are inspected based on their state classification. So these come down from the State Department of Public Health. There's class one, class two, class three, class four. Uh, class four is more your sit down restaurant and class one is more like your convenience store, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And their inspectional schedule has been tied to their class. So if it was a class one, once a year, two, twice a year, three, three times a year, four, four times a year. That isn't always possible. Uh, there are a large number of food services, and I've talked to directors of health everywhere, all over the state, and they all suffer from the same thing about not necessarily being able to get into a class four, four times a year. On the other hand, we get in there four times a year because if we get in three times and there's a failure, we need to go back. And those are triggered reinspections that we have to do. So there can be places that have been inspected eight times in a year because they've been noted problems and in protecting public health, we have to go in and make sure those things are fixed. <coughs> now, that's under the current classification. And one of the things we've been talking about is that the FDA food code is coming in. It got eased in about a year ago with the temperature requirements. They changed from what the Connecticut requirements were. So we used to say, well, cold food has to below or be below 45 degrees. Now it's 41. Hot food used to have to be above 140. Now it's 135. So that was the first phase of the FDA regulations. <coughs> The state has been having a problem getting their regulation drafted and out. Consequently, they keep putting it off. The last thing that we have heard was that it should be in place January 1st. They finally have some draft regulations that came out this past week. Under the FDA food code, some of these places will be reclassified. In fact, most of them will be. Things that were class four will be called a class three. They are going to allow us to inspect those three times a year in recognition that's more what they are. Class fours are going to be things like institutions, schools, convalescent homes, things of that sort. So the classifications are going to change, <coughs> our fee structure will change accordingly. Pretty much people will, in terms of fees, it'll probably line up pretty close to what their class is now, but they will be reclassified. Uh, Jamie Ellis is our food uh, training officer under the FDA code, you have to have one, and of all things, Bob, standardization. She has to standardize all the inspectors. So she has to accompany them on a certain number of inspections each year to make sure that they're standardized and that they're seeing things the same way. She is doggedly determined, and she's a very smart young lady. <coughs> and I think she'll do a great job with this. She's already attended a number of FDA conferences. Uh, she's also met with uh, NACHO representatives, um, National Association of County and City Health Officials. So she's really top notch on this and she's worked on getting us some grants in that regard too for training and education and we've already had discussions with our health educator and both Jamie and our health educator, Nancy McCullough, plan on offering training to our food service establishments. We want to be able to do that more. Always something that we, we have offered training in the past, serve safe training, uh, serve safe training will be offered again. So there will be more on that. I, I think that, uh, now do you have somebody who just does food service inspections? Right now, it's pretty much Jamie's exclusive. She, I'm not going to say she does only food service because she can also go out on complaints. She could go out on a simple inspection for septic, but we try to keep those away from her and let her concentrate in that field of expertise. Mm -hmm. We also have a new sanitarium coming on board in December who is very strong in food service inspection. So between the two of them, we hope to get a much more robust food program. Okay. Now, Jamie, has she covers the, the five towns at uh, Chatham Health, all, all their towns. All six. Yeah. Don't, don't get ahead of ourselves here, Bob. We're still 
six. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, um, yes, she, she does them everywhere, but we also have other inspectors that are doing food service inspection. Okay. So pretty much everybody's food service certified. Our public health nurse is also food service certified and can jump in at a pinch. Our health educator is food service certified and can jump in at a pinch. I am food service certified. I have to go through all the processes that everyone else does right now because the FDA code, we have some 30 something courses we each have to take. So they're, they're required. The FDA food code is very specific. Could I just touch on uh, the food trucks? The food trucks have always been a uh, source of a, of a Problem as far as getting them basically certified because uh, they're a one day or a two day deal, and if they're working with quite often with a nonprofit or something, uh, you know, we're not dealing with a whole big amount of income here. And we had asked about uh, having something so that if a food truck A gets approved by Chatham Health, that will take care of the whole Chatham Health. It does. It does. It already does, and it has for some time. We, um, our food trucks get <coughs> inspected when they're coming on board. So if somebody doesn't yet have a food truck, we have, or if they're just getting one, we have something called food service plan review. We do it for all food services that are coming up. And we do a plan review, and we let them know if they need anything. So, for example, We'll have a food truck that somebody's buying it down in North Carolina. They have all the specs on it and everything, and we say, beautiful, that's got everything. Um, and often that's just what they are. They're, they're all set to go. Others, though, it's like uh, they didn't really think of anything here. They, there's no hand sink in here. There's no way to wash anything. And I know people say, well, you can take it home and wash it. Well, that's not how it's supposed to work. And when we do license a food truck, it is licensed for all six towns for a year. So once they have that license, they don't have to go, go get a license to operate anywhere with a channel. They've got it for a year. Okay. Has there been ever any talk of doing it, let's say, as a, the, a, a multiple of towns uh, that it could work for? Let, uh, you know, obviously, they don't just stay in and... Chatham's district, they are going to be in uh, probably anywhere from sure. New Haven to, to Stonington. I think I would right now defer that there was a meeting just recently. Steve, maybe you could just mention that. Yeah, um, we just recently participated in a meeting with several other health departments to try and standardize this. The other health departments were Ledge Light, Uncas, Northeast District, Eastern Highlands, and North Central. And one of the questions that did come up for the group to think about was food trucks that cross jurisdictions. Uh, food trucks were something we want to standardize, farmers markets and temporary events. So the thought was with, with those health departments, that's like almost 80% of Eastern Connecticut, to try and standardize forms and everything else so we can try and make it easier for people that cross jurisdictional lines. So this is something that's in the works that we... This that is we... something that's in the works with all the different, as I said, with Wedge Light, Ancas, Chatham, Eastern Highlands, Northeast, and North Central. And food trucks, temporary events, and farmers markets are right now what we want to work on with them. That would be a great thing to basically have some kind of an agreement because it would make it so much easier for the businesses that bring in these food trucks for the you know, the two-day weekends. I mean, we have our fall weekend, um, and, and basically we have food trucks around town. And, and it's easier for us, too. Right. So it makes it easier for everybody all around. Yeah. yeah. So if we could obviously have something like what you're working on, that would be great. And that is really just one of the starts. We figure that we're going to use this for other areas of environmental health, try and standardize things, because most of the people we deal with cross jurisdictional lines. Yes. Right. And I mean, basically, we're going to pull them out of whether they're coming out of New Haven or they're coming out of Stonington or they're coming out of Hartford. Basically, 
they're going to cover this whole area and uh, in order to keep themselves busy. And uh, so I think anything we can standardize and have one certificate that covers them and that makes it easier for the, like our businesses, then they know when they hit, you know, they don't have to worry about the health director coming down and, and approving this one food service, which we want to get away from. Uh, you know, you don't want to do that on a Friday afternoon, and, uh, and we want to make sure that they can get started on Saturday morning at, at uh, 7 o'clock to start serving coffees. And uh, so I think that uh, that, would be, uh, that would be a great uh, help for all of us. So it has started. That's the, direction. That's the direction we're, we're going, and it starts with them agreeing that, you know, okay, let's let's make our forms all similar so that people can understand this was the form I did here, it's similar here. <clears throat> Some of the other agreements to get it across jurisdictional lines, probably going to be harder to do, but it is something that we're looking at that we would like to do. And as Steve said, with other things too, like, we have been required for some time to have a, a salon regulation because they should be inspected for health reasons. And what we find is that every single district has a different regulation. These are things that perhaps the state could have seized on to and said, thou shalt do it this way, but they didn't. So we're looking at that. We're trying not to reinvent the wheel on everything. Um, and I think the more standardized they get, the better it is for the residents of the state in general. And also for the residents out there and the businesses out there so that they know, because, you know, they don't just stay in one town either. They're, they move too. And uh, so once you get certified, you'd like to be certified, uh, period. And um, is there any thought of, um, of any classes or anything as far as um, some of the districts have given lead abatement uh, classes um, so that you could, uh, the contractors are, you know, obviously having to get certified for any time they touch a, a, one of these uh, 1850 houses that uh, have lead paint on it. And, there, uh, there have been, there have been discussions about <coughs> it. I'll tell you, there's a couple of things that happened. The state Department of Public Health cut back on lead funding. So they used to provide us a certain amount of lead funding and they would always have recommended projects for us. Um, we tried to do things that would do the most good, um, come up with brochures. We came up with brochures that could go into um, offices of OBGYNs so that pregnant mothers could learn about lead before it was a problem for them. Um, so we've worked on things of that sort. We have talked about these classes. These classes were offered in abundance all over the place and we heard a lot of people were not getting anybody to them because there was just such a flood of them. So are they a good thing to have? Yeah, they, and they can be held um, so far in, in the recent past. I haven't seen a huge demand for it um, and yet I see a need for it because we do have a lot of contractors that touch things. We've had lead poisoning cases where a contractor didn't know what they were doing and they touched things they should never have touched. But that's another aside I would have you understand is that the health district is involved in, in lead poisoning cases. That we do go out and we do epidemiological investigations on properties. Um, our nurse will follow up a whole series of questions with the family meantime, we will end up collecting soil, water, dust, possibly what we call XRF, X-ray fluorescence readings of the home to find out where the lead is. And recently, we just had one with a toy, and the toy was like it was pure lead mm -hmm. um, that a, a child was playing with all the time, and they began poison. We have worked on a number of lead cases, and we've closed out some lead cases here in East Allen. Yeah. Steve, did you have a comment? Yeah, it's had, had, not about lead, but it addresses uh, providing something to the community and reached out to the private drinking water section at DPH and they've agreed to hold informational sessions for people regarding private drinking water and treatment systems and come here to East Haven and do it next year. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. And, so, uh, and I imagine that's the type of thing that you want us to look for is providing more 
I think we're looking to trade and, and have a, a relationship between our contractors, uh, and not just regulatory, but also something where we're, we're we want to bring them into being uh, something friendly, something that, that they're going to get out of uh, working with Chatham Health District. And and if if a class on lead was being offered, I mean, obviously your painters and your GCs and and, and that kind of a contractor, which. That's East Adam. I mean, you know, we're uh, basically, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of contractors out there. A lot of them deal with the dirt, but uh, some of them deal with painting up the walls, too. And so I think that it would be a good PR for, for Chatham Health to offer something like that. Um, also, for, for realtors uh, to basically get a course in the basics, uh, you know, what's a B100? What does it mean? And uh, so when they have a client out there, uh, they can say, well, you know, you're going to have to go to the health district to learn what this is all about. And so that I think so we get the information that's correct. And, uh, and I think that, uh, again, we're a town, it's a residential town. So, uh, you know, we've got, uh, there's, there's realtors out there, and I think they would benefit from this. And certainly uh, I've seen it down on the shoreline where they have had it. Um, and there's people who show up and go. And, um, and I think it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good way in which to uh, invite the public and invite the, the realtors in and become a part of and know a little bit more about wells and know a little bit more about lead in the, and of course water is huge today and uh, what's the arsenic in the water? What, what, you know, is this, uh, you know, it's, a, it's kind of like another one of those new things out there and what happens if there's arsenic in the water? And, and, you know, what can you do? And I think giving them a little bit of knowledge that comes from professionals uh, would probably go a long way towards uh, making sure the information that gets out into the public is accurate rather than... Uh, it hasn't been in the past, like, year or two, but we had offered a program on radon-resistant new construction back when it wasn't required by the state building code. Um, it was just a good idea. We were have about 20,000 people a year in the U.S. that die of lung cancer related to radon. And if you did that just by population, it came out maybe about 200 in Connecticut. Um, we offered training on how to do radon resistant construction because it's so easy and we offered it for building officials and contractors. And, uh, you, you may be surprised at the time the answer was, this is, this is easy. We'll do it as soon as it's required. <laughs> and uh, But it is now required. It's, it's part of the building code now. But I do understand that we do offer training like that. And you know, certainly if you guys wanted to see lead training, that happened. There's a number of trainings that, that we can offer. The realty one is always one that's uh, important, uh, just on all of the environmental topics, because so many of them don't really have a grasp on it, and it becomes critical mass right before the closing. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I think... On behalf of the environmental staff, we would love to do more education instead of people just thinking of us as regulators, because that's only one facet of it, but we would prefer to be educators. Regulators are only one thing to break down. So it's, edu edu it's almost like preventative medicine education. Yes. And it's very, it's very helpful for, uh, I don't care whether it's the contractors or, or whatever, it's, it's helpful for them to get those ideas. And, and even like on the radon, I remember probably three, four years ago, you had brochures out in the office on what to do uh, for that. And, uh, and it did. It was a case where it was very inexpensive when it was new construction. It was a lot more expensive when you had to go chop up that floor and, and get uh, basically some ventilation in that floor. And uh, so... Bob? Yes. Uh, regarding that, I believe realtors have to have a certain number of education units every I year. Believe, right. Yes. And it seems to me that some of this training should be as part of their education units that they can uh, receive. And not just, I understand trying to get interaction with your local uh, <coughs> health district, but uh, I think some of these things are important for them through whatever mechanism they have to to get that training, whether it's statewide training, I mean, through the state, 
or, or however that... Uh, they that operate they, within boards of realty. Right. Not, not to interrupt you. Yes. That, that's, um, that's one place where we could reach them through mm -hmm. those realty boards and ask if they could get credit if we taught something for a couple hours. I think it's a great idea. Um, I'm just going to take and let a uh, little more question. Uh, Irene, um, would you? When we met with you earlier in the fall, we talked about um, Chatham Health and the, and the struggles that you guys have been having in regards to um, personnel, and that it just hasn't been, um, you've had trouble getting people out there. We've been, you know, the Chatham Health District has been very spotty this last year as far as people here being able to, you know, meet with our contractors to get to their deadlines. And obviously, we talked about inspections already. So, where is Chatham Health now? I mean, what can we expect if we continue with Chatham Health? What is the, you know, what can you promise that, you know, this we're paying the same amount we paid last year, but we don't have the service that we had. So is this beneficial to our town or not? And if it's not, what are you doing to, to so, remedy that? I think there's one piece of information <clears throat> that was out there that is not correct. You have not had a full-time sanitarian. The whole time, whole time Liz was here, I mean, from the beginning, she was full-time, and then when she went out on maternity leave and she came back, she was pretty much a three-day-a-week person. And when you have a sanitarian in your town, that's not the only sanitarian that works here. We circulate people, <coughs> and there could be somebody in the office, there could be two people in the field. There was a time here a couple weeks ago when, where we had people working here, but we also had a flu clinic going on where there were two staff members here and 147 flu vaccinations were done. So it's not just what you're seeing in the office, but in terms of what you're asking, we did get a person. This is not unusual right now to have problems getting employees. While we were searching, there were eight departments that were looking for sanitarians. That's why we're relying on the Zach Jessics of the world to, to get in here and get in the workforce. Uh, there just aren't that many sanitarians. Most of them are aging out. They are mostly in the 50s and 60s now. Not a lot of people that are getting into the field. We don't know why, but we like to think we're even trying to work on that. I've had a meeting with uh, the Natural Resources Department up at UConn and said, we don't have anybody that's coming out of school that can help us read soils to do anything with septic systems. Where are we going to get our qualified people from? And we had a great discussion. And uh, Dr. Jason Bakun up there said, you know what? I think we could offer a minor in environmental health, and then you can start creating some of those people for you. So right. I find that to be exciting, and I've always been a proponent of workforce development. Um, it's not easy trying to get people when there aren't and what's happening is health departments are pretty much poaching from each other at this point. That's fine to a certain degree, but not when there's enough of a shortage that, you know, take here, go there, and everybody's just moving around for a couple thousand dollars here and there. Is it going to push the salaries for sanitarians up? Without a doubt, it will. So that's going to be not just for our department. That will be probably for every department, just because there aren't people. But we do have a mixture of people, too. And as I told you, we, we have, in terms of sanitarians, you know, we, we uh, offer more of them than does Connecticut River area. We do have a public health nurse. We do have a health educator. We've got an office manager who's also our bookkeeper. We have an administrative assistant, a director. And we have some contract people. So we're always looking to be more fully staffed within financial parameters, but that's really not any different from us than others. We are more financially healthy now than we were three years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah, did you have a couple of questions? Yeah. Uh, what is the document that defines the scope of work at Chatham Health Services? I have not seen it, so I don't know what it is. That's fair enough. And I guess I would have to say that 
in my time, my tenure, I haven't really had to go dig that out, but I'd be happy to dig out what it is. Basically, it's well, providing. Do we have a contract with services. Chatham Health? And does that have a scope of work? It's providing the public health services for the town. That's all it says. I mean, I, I can see what it has in there, but I will assure you, you're not getting shorted on service. The gentleman in the back has. Yeah, and, I mean, it doesn't <clears throat> quite answer your question, but recently in town of Hebron, I participated in what they call ER Hebron, where all the different departments did a presentation on the services that they provide to the community. And we'd be willing to do that presentation down here if we show you what the scope of services were, <clears throat> because most people think of us, you know, as sewer, water, and food. Mm -hmm. They don't know that we get into housing complaints and different state agencies that we deal with, such as DSF and Detective Services. So I think Andy will tell you that program went over really well in Hebron, and we were talking about having something like that in the individual towns so that people knew exactly what it is that we do. Mm -hmm. And I sort of want to go back to your question as part of the services. The new uh, sanitarium is going to be starting. Um, what to me makes her a bit unique is this is somebody that we went after instead of just having somebody apply to us and hire. This was somebody who we knew was good, and we went and asked her to come and work for us. So you'll see a real professional person when you come here. It wasn't just we got an application, we hired someone. This was somebody we actively went out. And, and that makes a difference in an employee when you go after somebody and they come to work. Andy. Yeah, yeah we're, we're here to answer your questions. We're not here to tell you what to do. But as the chairman of the board with the six towns, I overview all the towns. And then East Haven has had a problem most recently with the person leaving. We did advertise for that position and we didn't get anybody that applied. So we re-advertised and we got this person. But overall, with the six towns in the district, we've been faring pretty well. Uh, we're human beings. If you get to us, I know you've met with Don and with Steve. Uh, most recently, I've met with uh, Emmett myself, some of these concerns. We, we work for you. We're here to listen. We're here to comply. We want you to stay within the district. This is a regionalization of the towns that you're one of the original ones that formed this. I, I think everything's fixable, but we wanna, it's got to get to the top. Um, it's a good time to introduce what we're doing. We've got a reorganizational situation going on with the district. Don is going to retire, but prior to doing that, he's going to go back into fields. So we're going to have another sanitarium. We're, we're actively seeking a new director. We're going to give them marching orders with a contract on what the towns expect. They've got a voice at the table every month. We've got a meeting tomorrow. So if there's, as soon as we hear there's issues, we're, we're, we're not going to come back you. We're going to say, hey, we need East Haddam. We got to take care of those people. And earlier, earlier you brought up the food service. I thought, I thought, I thought we, for the most part, had nipped that in the bud. I know that was a concern, but is that still going on? I thought we had that. There's always some contention with food service. There's always some contention between the health department and the regulated bodies. Um, we have made it our general policy that we're not looking for the confrontation, we're looking for the compliance. Is that always easy? No. Um, there are, believe it or not, business people that don't want to see us. Gee, that's surprising. <laughs> well, now we, we, realize that, <laughs> we realize that we got some issues. We're not here to come in and say we don't. No, but we want to work together, and Emmett, Emmett is your voice there for the town of East Town, and rightfully so. I'm the voice for Hebron. We have lead in our water at our schools. We're going through a major repair, and it's learn as you go, and Chatham Health has been very involved in that. We are in many things. I mean, in preparation tonight, I just kind of called a couple of people and said, been satisfied with our services, would you please give a letter of support? And we've had a couple of those. I don't know if you received them or not. I, I've got a number here. Okay. So we've done some good things. But as the chairman, I, I hear it's everybody's turn in the seat. And I, I don't mean to deserve a turn, it just happens that way. East Hampton has their growing pains. I think Bob probably yeah, goes down here where you probably hear some of those. Colchester had some pains. We, 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 you know, 
extinguish those. East Hat, East Hampton is staying with us. They know what we're doing, we're moving forward. Um, is there situations we have to address and do better? Yes, we all agree to that. When Emmett was a representative for East Haddam, I decided that I would step up and take over this organization as a chairperson. All the six towns said we would stay and we would work together to make that happen. So to be here tonight, I appreciate it. The, the building is beautiful. I went to school there and I haven't seen it. But <laughs> we're here to listen and to be cooperative. We, we need you as a regionalization. If, if East Haddam were to pull out, it would affect the other mutual aid towns in, in, a, in a bunch of different ways. It, it might be the, mm -hmm. the end of the health district and then every town's scrambling. And not every town that's in this district has an easy move. I do. It doesn't affect you. And I could go where Mark Walters is, and, and that's a good health district as well. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, I think Portland is in a situation. East Hampton is in a, is in a tough situation. Uh, Colchester could probably go, I don't know. I don't know but, so we want to make this work. We hear you. We're human beings. We want to do what's going to make you guys stay in the district. Um, we, we cross over. You might not have somebody in the office, but if, if Bob Kazer or Jimmy Kirk call up and need an expansion. When we started this, I had Steve, the head sanitarian, full-time. So if anybody lost, it was a town of heat. I had full-time 40 hours a week at every staff meeting. Maybe he likes it better now, not dealing with me. But he's, he's down here. And we're, that's what the district's about. It's willing to move people where they're needed. It's not so much that they're just in the office. And Emmett and I had talked. There's been some reductions in the town of East Adams staffing in that office as well. So that might be a little bit of a crossover. But in no way is it a criticism. We'll do what we can. But at the same time, we're still trying to keep that per capita cost down. Give you the service. We're, we're open to doing classes. I mean, we're, we're doing a lot of stuff in a lot of the other towns, but we're, we're more than welcome to come down here and do that. Well, hopefully, I mean, you can get grants to, to, to pay for it. I mean, that's the idea. I mean, but somebody has to go out and get the grant uh, and, and then offer whatever, you know, classes the communities may want. I think that, you know, this particular community, I think, is, is certainly very... Uh, being since it's residential, um, we're going to basically be more on the residential side. So it's the contractors and the realtors. And I think that that would also give us a good taste as to what the participation would be if we did offer something. And uh, if we only have two people show up, then, you know, we know that uh, that's a waste of resources and a waste of time. But uh, if you have 20 people show up, then you'll say, well, that was worthwhile then to get that information out. Because obviously uh, at the coffee shop tomorrow, you'll hear about whatever went on uh, at the meeting. Right. And uh, so, you know, it's, it's not only that one person who was at the meeting, it's the other two people who they're having coffee with uh, tomorrow morning, which helps. And uh, and I certainly appreciate you being here, Andy, because I think that a lot of this goes to the top, too. It goes to the top. And as the director, um, I, I think that, you know, Don was always an interim kind of director here. And and I think that, um, or that's what I understood when, when he, he was... <laughs> the title ended after a few months. Sorry about that. Oh. I, I thought I was the director this whole time. <laughs> well, you certainly are. <laughs> but I think that it's, it's one of those things where... Um, we thought that there was going to be an, a new person coming yeah. into that position. We definitely had some growing pains. We all got together as the heads of the towns, decided we would try to make this work. We, we are in good financial stability now. We have some good long-term employees with uh, good credentials. Um, we did have a problem with some of our, our people leaving. We felt that. We, we hear you. We've, we've moved some things around. We've hired some new people. Like I said, new ones coming on board this December. Hopefully the transition with Don going back into the field will fill all those loopholes. And then we're going to have a, a director with uh, Emmett's uh, input on guidance on how we proceed. It's municipal government. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not, it's not like hazard construction. You get it done. <laughs> no, but no, I think that it, it's certainly... Uh, I mean, obviously now we're talking about having two sanitarians who would actually be in the field. In addition, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, that's... One's a you. replacement of the one that left. But then down yes, there. but I think it's also a case where, you know, obviously these are very strong people you have coming on. Uh, so, yeah. Nice. Oh. Uh, so, for optimal staffing, Andy and Don, are you going to be getting there with, with you coming back into the field 
a new director and a new san the new sanitarian or are you still going to be looking for additional people i i think we'll be fairly well staffed at that point um, mm -hmm. there's always change in health and we know that there's going to be we look at some of our other programs um, i don't know if you're all aware that you guys through us get your everbridge emergency preparedness system so that you can do call downs and the like in, in the event of emergency. It's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of things you get that you don't see, but to the degree that we can smooth out the bumps in delivery of service, we're always looking to do that. Would we always like more people? Sure. But we have to work within the fiscal constraints. Obviously. So you think that with the staffing that you have proposed now, yeah. you're going to be comfortable and be able to handle I believe so, yeah. Everything that's on your plate now, unbeknownst what you sure. know, the state may throw at you in the future or sure. whatever, but uh, as of right now, you're going to, or in, in the near future, you'll be well enough staffed to handle all your responsibilities. Yes, and they, I mean, in, in one way, we really are there. We're, we're getting the work done. It's getting done timely. Um, so what we're looking at is, staffing here is just improvement. Um, and I think that's the issue here, is that they're looking for improved services. Yeah, it's a, yeah. a double-edged sword. We, we're trying to watch costs. Mm -hmm. We weren't getting a lot of people filling out cases, so we were hiring people that we had to train. But as soon as they got trained, they would leave. So it wasn't working. We, we realized that, and that's part of the problem here today. Now we hire trained people. This person that's coming on has a lot of years of service. There'll still be a little bit of training with the district. And Don's a senior... Um, you know, staff person already. So, with adding him to the new person, that'll be more than we've ever had as far as staffing goes. And we're going to try to do that within the same per capita cost to the towns. So, it's a catch twenty two. You need. If you want the service, we got to pay a little bit more money. We got to bring the salaries up, right, Steve? I mean, that's why we're losing people. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, we got an instant rate of affirmative on that one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a good they, they get coached to another <laughs> district that offer them. We have a very good benefits package, but if you lay it down to the hourly rates, we're, we're not the top. I think that maybe I'd like to address one thing with that. With some of the other towns, who I mean, like Steve, he's Hebron, and uh, that's his, kind of his base. And we haven't had anybody in East Haddam with a base. Is that something that the board would be looking at, is basically having one of your sanitarians be uh, based out of this office? I'll refer that back to you, but I'm going to tell you, as soon as we join this district, I lost Steve. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm a 40 hour a week guy, and I think I see him twice a week. And, I, and that's, if that's all he's needed over there, he's out servicing the district or training some of the other ones. So I just want to make sure that's clear, but then I'll let these guys answer well, that question. I'll tell you that Liz Davidson was your base, yes, but it was pretty much three days a week for yes. a very long time. Right, and and I think that you know the flow seemed to be okay. Yep. Um, I think when when Liz was here, I, I could see the movement of paper. The paper seemed to get yep. get moved around, and mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that probably three days a week, depending obviously how much. Uh, uh, work comes in, how many applications. It was a, quite of a lull. We, we didn't have much going on. I mean, it was like, uh, there, you know, a building permit was like uh, golden if we saw somebody come in and say and we want to build something. That with the town. Some towns get hot, other towns get cool. Well, we um, warmed up a little bit. I mean, I think we're seeing so definitely... Liz, because of her change in where she resides, is now Portland, and she's that's her base mm -hmm. three days a week. When I step down, I'm intending to make this my base. Doesn't mean I'm going to sit here all the time. No, no. Uh, yeah. I'm going to do the work inside and out, but that's the idea behind it. This whole transition, I, I don't want you to get the wrong idea about it. It is a transition. I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> I still can do this work, and I still have a lot to give. Yeah. But uh, I think in terms of a director, it's a good time to get somebody in so that if they have any questions, I can be overlapping <coughs> with them. Yes. But it's all toward building, and hey, if I love this town, who knows, maybe I'll never retire. 
<laughs> well, we'd be very happy with that, Don. <laughs> you have a very good reputation out there in the field, and uh, the contractors all have a great deal of respect for you. We're just, we're just, what we're trying to say is that this transition that we're aiming for is to be orderly. It's, it's to put things in a good position for the future mm -hmm. going forward. Jimmy, you got something there? Well, one of the things people don't see from my end, and nobody asked until now, um, is that, you know, from the land use office, other than that temporary blip with the employment on the lack of it, that's gone now, we also keep a good track of who started the project. So to me, it doesn't matter. They're all professionals. So if he started a project, well, then we, we kept on forwarding that information to him as it was submitted. So the, even though you don't see somebody there, that communication is still there because we've been working hand in hand. So if a project starts, Steve's reviewing it, they submit additional information, we PDF and send it out. So it's not like it just got lost and sits there. Uh, since you know my person's left, shall not be named. <laughs> um, things have been working fine because we keep on track on who started it and. As long as we have people processing stuff, that's, you know, I understand, Bob, you like to see a base in the same person, but it's the same stuff. It's the public health code. It's, you know, it's, it's the same math. It's the same answer, you know, as to what's going on there. Um, but what you don't want to see is three people working on the same project. So what we've done is made sure that it has that continuum. That if Jim started it, Jim gets it, Steve starts it, Steve gets it, Liz gets it, Liz. So even if there is somebody coming and doing substitute teaching for the day, they're going to get continue it on. So we've been keeping an eye on that. And it's working. You're right. You need to have somebody there. And we've had that. You know, so no one asked me about that beforehand, but you know, we had that little low. We're done with that now. That's all over. <laughs> this must be why Antonella Daha that works at DEEP told me the other day that uh, Jim is somebody she will never allow to retire. <laughs> yeah, I She's got the same pack with me, so she can't retire either. Hang on to him. She's the only one up there right now, isn't she? Yeah, pretty much. That's, that's bad. Yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. had a comment. Well, a couple of comments. So, so I am the president of the business association. So, in that capacity, I represent local businesses in East Tatum and beyond East Tatum. Um, in addition, I own CSF Community Markets, which organizes a lot of the community events, over 300 per year, um, and represent lots and lots of vendors, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them, who sometimes have to interact with the health district, um, including, um, you know, just as a market master, uh, wearing that hat as well. I have had plenty of interactions with different people who have come through to do inspections for the vendors and then come back and report to me, whether it's an event like Celebrate East Haddam or whether it's the East Haddam Farmer's Market. And so with these experiences over a really long period of time, I think, I think it's going to be 10 years, almost 9 to 10 years for those markets that are local. Um, you know, everyone has varying comments and concerns and sometimes, um, you know, positive things to report and sometimes negative things to report about their experiences with various uh, member town, you know, staff from, from Chatham Health. And so I guess where I stand is even though Bob has rightfully said that we're a community of residences, we also have all of these events and not just the ones that I organize, but events that lots of people organize like community go-getters, doers, um, things that happen in this town happen because some volunteer in the distance is organizing them. And that volunteer may not always uh, be able to keep up with what's happening with the health district. And so it's very important that that person representing that event um, has the knowledge firsthand and has a working relationship, which I personally have tried to establish with the health district. I've had varying results. I've had some really great people in my corner um, that I have been very comfortable meeting with every single year. Um, but on the other side, I've heard a lot of um, business owners and vendors, so to speak. Sometimes that is the same and sometimes it is not. Sometimes vendors are not business owners, but oftentimes they are. Um, and I have received feedback that is contrary to my own experiences. And so I have tried to bridge that you know, gap, which is, I think is wide, um, and work with each person as they come and then go, and then try to catch up to what's happening. Um, and it's really complicated. 
to keep up with you know, uh, from the outside, never mind from the inside. And I have also offered to come to the health district offices and meet in the winter time so that we can establish, uh, you know, the set of parameters that we're working with for the following year. I've even invited um, the health district to come to my farm or to wherever we're meeting as vendors. I've organized vendor meetings so that they can become educated on what's happening now. What are the fees? You know, addressing all of the concerns and fears and questions that all of these vendors and businesses have, and I've had mixed results as that as well. So I know that you guys have experienced a ton of change, still are in that period of transition and not really quite there yet. However, I'd like to be able to provide um, in an educated way um, information and resources to my business owners and vendors who really need this to do it right. I, 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 I completely agree with what you said, Steve, about you know, the preventative medicine. You know, it's, it's very important that the health district is proactive and, and not necessarily hand-holding and babysitting. I'm not referring to that. I mean, I think it's definitely upon each business owner's responsibility to take responsibility and do their best to learn. But there are so many who have no clue what they're supposed to do or how they're supposed to do it. And when it changes often, whether it's the fee or the application not being up to date or some piece of information, just makes it difficult for them to do what they need to do and what they thought they needed to do. <coughs> so suddenly they're not meeting the parameters and they're getting a lot of flack. So, so to make this easier for everyone is the goal. Um, it would be, like you said, easier for you guys and it would be easier for the vendors and businesses that I represent we if we could we have these events. Yeah. right? And so, again, I'm happy to meet with you. I'm happy to discuss those concerns, like, over a session in the wintertime when I have a little bit more flexibility in my schedule. Sure. Um, but I think it's absolutely crucial that the health district that we work with ultimately as a town has the best interests of the business owners and vendors in mind. It benefits everyone. And I do not feel that, you know, in representing everyone that, that we've been able to do that uh, effectively. Um, <coughs> to do that effectively, I think it requires us to sit at the same table and have a session. Um, and figure out what it is that we're expecting and what it is that we need to be able to run these community events. There yeah. isn't anything that you're saying that I disagree with. Um, and I have heard much about you that you've facilitated and smoothed things over in a number of cases where things were tense. So I know your job isn't easy. Um, I am not somebody who has been heavily on the food service end of things. I, I think that that's one of the harder jobs. That's why when I see Jamie and uh, now Melissa that are going to be working on that, I think we're in good hands. But I think that what you're proposing would be a great idea to see if we can start making things easier to understand. And then if we have to have you know meetings with groups, let's do it. Yeah, I think I think I know that the challenge. I mean, I can see your perspective as well. Is you know you guys have a but oh, oftentimes these events and these. Uh, programs and activities and markets are all outside your nine to five business hours. There's a little overlap sometimes, but oftentimes they're on the weekend. They are. Oftentimes they're after five o'clock, or and it's really hard to get from A to B and make it in time and do it effectively. And so, you know, there there's sometimes the communication drops, or you know, it's hard for even just the member towns to communicate about where they've been and what they've done. And sometimes there's two and three and six emails plus like three or four phone calls to give the same answer. <laughs> and so, you know, and to make sure it gets to the right person and then that person doesn't get it to the other. And so it is it is a little bit tricky to say the least. It is. And I think and, it's and a challenge for you guys as much as it is for us. When we have to, you know, do something on after hours or weekend, then we're talking about, you know, either paying our contract people or then it's getting one of our full timers and either allowing them comp time or to be paid overtime to do it. Right. Um, I have stated for the record about everywhere I could state it that in the past, I want to say five years, there isn't anything that happens in the state of Connecticut anymore that people don't serve food. Right. Uh, right. I, I swear, <laughs> it used or to be alcohol, or baseball <laughs> tournaments. Now I think it's baseball practice. So brings people in. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Everybody wants to serve food everywhere, and some of the stuff we would just assume, and we're, we're taking some leads from the state on where we're going to be able to say, okay, we're not going to be able to help in certain situations. There might be situations come the future where something is labeled as an event that this is not health department inspected just because we can't. Um, but 
I have some in the creative meantime, ideas what about we it. want to do is keep it as safe for everybody as possible. And I, I have a colleague that's up in the town of Portland, and he used to tease me all the time. He, I'd be coming into the office, he'd go, hey, I want to talk to you about the sushi I'm serving this week. <laughs> <laughs> so do you see common problems or repetitive problems at your events or complaints coming in that that the vendors are often frequently have issues with? Don, can I jump in? No. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if she was asking. Either, asking either or. Either, either or. Asking, 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 but asking, I guess asking, Andy's going to answer. Being the chairman and having six towns, all of a sudden it's like the bat phone. You could be anywhere outside of work hours and the phone will ring. We have a gelato salesman that's used to selling it in Middletown. And their health district's fine with certain things. He signs up to go to Old Home Day in East Hampton. They got a space in the middle of their event, and all of a sudden now he can't proceed because he didn't deal with the health district at all. But we're not that being uh, mean with the bat to hit him over the head. We said, we let you go last year and said, make sure you don't do this again. And he did it again. So now the phone's ringing, the first selectman, the, the, the whole council. The health district, Don, they even sent the police after us to find us to answer the questions. That was so, the day I went home early because I was sick and I right. So not to tell war stories by the Glastonbury police. Right, not to tell war <laughs> stories, but as Steve said earlier, with all the districts getting together, especially with these farmers markets and these food trucks, every health district has a little bit different regulation or what they're looking for. So the consistency would help because you have food trucks over at Coventry or down in Chester and then they come here and we're different or they're different but that's what we're facing and 90% of the people are good they come in they do it when they're supposed to they meet the deadline and then you're going to get out of all of them you're going to get one one farmer what do they call it I don't know the farmer farm master market master market master, market master. Mm -hmm. we got one that totally refuses to deal with the, the regulations mm -hmm. and we're Picking them, and we get another one with a farm that's not even recognized by the agriculture. We're, and we still, we don't, we're not mean to them. We try to work through it, but some people you just you're doing right. your and best. I think, and I think the challenge for you guys, and for also for the people running markets, especially <coughs> for as long as I have, is that um, you have essentially you existed long before the markets did. Um, but on the other hand, the markets existed before you started regulating them. And so that's where you're running into that issue and that stubbornness. Because a lot of people are not willing to conform, whether right. it's the Department of Agriculture for the state of Connecticut or whether it's the Chatham Health District or any other district trying to regulate a market that they ran and organized in their own mind well before you came along. And so for them, it was it's difficult to make that change because I, I do talk with market masters all over the state. I feel like health districts should do the exact same thing. It sounds like you do that once in a while. It would be awesome if, as a state of health districts, everybody could be on the same page, whether it's application and having an understandable form that everyone gets. I've, I've worked with Liz on rewriting that whole thing I don't know how many times. It's still not there yet. We still have work to do, but we make this gradual change. You know, so meeting You're right. The, You're right, and Bob's right. It's, it's the education. We're willing to do that. Like I said, we're not here to tell war stories, but you guys know what goes on in the district. We get the Hebrew Fair. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Steve, I brought Steve to a meeting for the Hebrew Maple Fest. I'm only speaking to this because these are things that happen in my town. He got accused of shutting the Girl, for, Girl Scouts down for selling cookies for the bats. That never happened. <laughs> <laughs> never happened. He's sitting there looking at me like, I didn't shut anybody. anybody to work <laughs> He's that mean, huh? <laughs> they, were, they were really upset with him. It was almost a confrontational meeting. I'm like, I don't know where you heard of it. We didn't ever shut anybody down. So, yeah, so it's, it's we're trying, we, we try to always keep our composure, we, we're not mean to people, we're... No, you, I mean, I'm going to be really honest, you guys have had people in the past who have been extremely rude and condescending to vendors, I'm just telling you that, just that's a free feedback I've seen and heard. Right, we've, now, we've I'm, had I'm some... I'm not pinpointing uh, anyone, because yeah. I've also worked some, with some really fantastic people. I agree, people. we've had some I personal changes. I personally haven't had a problem with anyone, yeah. but I know that my business owners and vendors have, and I've, and I've heard some of it, and sure. it's just... Again, it could be lack of training, maybe not enough. Like you guys said, you're bringing somebody in brand new who needs to be trained. Maybe they're just not the right customer service oriented person with the right purpose in mind. Okay. So the goal is A, to help them, yep. give them the tools and resources they need, and then B, to regulate them. Sure. 
you know, so, so the way I see that is it can be done. Yeah. And I think we just need to develop a mutual respect for each other's purpose. Andy or Don, <laughs> could you tell me why the individual health districts, or there isn't a unified standards across the state? I can answer that quickly. In ingenuity. <laughs> or the state would like to see the state would like to see that, but there's some health districts out there that have own their own buildings. They own their own a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of health directors. So they really didn't talk to the health departments when they threw this consolidation out a year or so ago, and it created a political ripple. And people were showing up in droves up to Hartford and saying, "You didn't." involve us, some legislator threw it out there, thought it'd be a good idea to consolidate, and there was a lot of unanswered questions, so the commissioner backed off on that. At least that's my take on it. But the yeah. state right now is really looking at onesies and twosies. They really don't, like Tillingworth, they, they don't want you out there with your sanitarian, and then you have to hire a director of health or a doctor to pick that up. If you were to put those two salaries together, you're right where you are with the Chatham Health District with the per capita. Yeah. So they're getting rid of the onesies or the twosies. They want they want districts, and I think you're going to see Don. You can step in. I think you're going to see even districts. I guess consolidate at some point. Okay. But mm -hmm. there there will be consolidation when when the commissioner of health didn't get what he was looking for there, which was anywhere from five to eight districts. Um, they kind of sort of looks like a backdoor approach now because our emergency <coughs> management regions we have five of them. And then they said, oh, well, let's do health care coalitions. So you're working through your health care coalition, which is in these same groups. So they're trying more to, uh, to partner these things up. But sometimes the state, when they offer these incentives for a town to join a district, they, they get things that they didn't anticipate, like two towns over here grabbing a town about 50 miles away over there. It doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay, so when you have the coalitions, or, or even as it exists now, and you have certain, the state has certain standards, but each individual health district has some separate standards so that, why would Middletown, shall we say, be any different than Chatham or Ledge Light or any of the other health districts? I mean, why is there not a standardized there are a lot of protocol or requirement for a food truck. Bigger, bigger area. If you're using Middletown, it's a bigger area. A lot more food establishments to cover. Establishment uh, uh, I get should, that. Should be the same. I'm not saying. But why would it not be the same? There are certain things that are the same. So under the FDA code, everybody will be following that. Everybody right. Everybody will have the FDA code form. Even the previous state regulation and the forms for doing the inspections, they had two different forms. Actually, they had three or four, I think. But they had a, a red, white, and black form, and then they had the green form, and the green form was the focused food form. And they said, everybody should do this because it's the closest thing to the FDA food code. So Chatham has done that for years and gotten well-versed in it. We're finding out now where they're trying to go to the FDA food code. There's towns that have been using the red, black, and white form for years, and they're struggling mightily because they've not already made that change that we did. But in answer to your question, because they can, because a district looks at a form and says, well, we're, we're doing uh, beauty salons. State didn't give us a form. I guess we better make one up. So then they go, geez, they didn't even give us a regulation. They just said we have to do it. So they make their own regulation. And then based on what they're seeing for problems, they modify their regulation. Like some places will find out that they're in a strip mall and some of the fumes coming out of these nail salons are, are awful. And so they put in a whole section on ventilation. Then another town hasn't seen that, so they don't have it. So it's because there was no format given by the state on a lot of these things. Now, the subsurface sewage program, they say, use this form, use that form, or the equivalent. And so generally, that's what people are using is the forms they give. Zach, are you sure you want to get into this? <laughs> <laughs> so you're taking it all in. Uh, <laughs> and I'll, I'll speak from my experience of, of being a, a food establishment owner for 
14 years in town here, and definitely having my, my run-ins with the, uh, with the health department to the, part, uh, to the point that I... Discussion. You had discussion. <laughs> discussions, yes, that I've, I've gone to. Yeah, they were run-ins. <laughs> Sometimes, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I've gone to, you know, Mark Walters um, and, and had sit-downs with him. Um, I've talked to Don Mitchell when, I, when I've had issues, and I will say that Chatham Health is always, um, has always been very helpful in um, addressing these issues, whether it was a personnel issue, whether it was questions on the proper way to, uh, to, to follow the code, or what does this code exactly mean, because a lot of times there's, uh, there's areas of gray where it's, it's, it's hard as a business owner to, to understand what they're asking for exactly, unless you're in this field every day and you understand you know exactly what you need to be doing. Um, I mean, it got to the point, you know, that Don gave me his cell phone number to, to get in contact with him when I when I had these had had issues in the past. Uh, you know, one of the things about public health is if it's if it's working properly, you really don't see the results. You you know, there's no foodborne outbreaks in town. There's uh, no water, you know, significant water contamination. It's they're it's serving its purpose. But it's it's hard for the people in the public here to to see that. Um, we had an incident this summer where our well pump uh, back in July was struck by lightning. Uh, we were given misinformation by the people that were repairing the pump that they were told us to just let the water run for an hour um, after they poured chlorine down the well, um, and they said, "Oh, you'll be you'll be good to go." Luckily, we had a random inspection where they came in and. We uh, told them what was what was going on, and they were making calls to the state instantly. They were helping us. I mean, it shut us down for a day and a half, but it saved hundreds of people from from getting sick in the community. Um, you know, it's with all the experience that I had over the years, it's just not something that I would have ever you know been prepared for. There's just certain things that you you, you can't plan for that you don't expect is you know running a, a grocery store that you know you're going to run into these issues, but, uh, you know, it's just, Shadow Health has been there along the way. Anytime I've had a call, with, with a prompt response from them to, to help with any, any situations, and there's, there's been a few headaches, um, and, you know, I've seen it where people, they come in and they kind of treat you like you're trying to trick the public or you're trying to cheat the system, and I think over the last few years, they've made great strides to, um, train their, uh, the personnel, the sanitaries, the inspectors to, to come in and to educate the, the business owner. Um, they require us now to uh, get recertified for our serve safe, for our food protection. Um, and you correct me if I'm wrong on this, Don, but not every district. The state did not require them once they got a certificate and said it's good for five years by the testing organization, and the state said it's good forever. They yeah. said that they really, we didn't think that was adequate, and that we part, made it part of our regulation to every five years. Now it's part of the FDA food code. They've got to do it every five years. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just you know that's well, an that example of summer sense. <clears throat> yeah, you know you you don't do these things every single day. And there's you know things that come up. So it is beneficial that they you know they've been having us go and retake this course. You know, got a lot well, out of it. I mean, as a practical matter, I mean, if a corporation, whether it's a grocery store or restaurant, doesn't do these things and they have issues. Then you have people who are ill; they're going to be out of business. So I don't see it as you know. When people look at it as if it, it's uh, where they're at loggerheads or over this stuff, it, that, that, that's poor thinking on the whole thing. I think anyone should look at it as if they're trying to help them have a successful business rather than catch them on some little thing. Well, I'd also say that Zach and other business people and citizens occasionally will come up with a question that we're stumped. Okay, it's like, this doesn't really fit here, doesn't fit here. And what we'll do is call the state and get the final determination from them because it's their regulations we're enforcing. Everybody says, well, you have a different health code. No, we all have the same health code. Any district you're in is enforcing the same public health code. But when those kind of questions come up, you know, that's part of our service too is to get the right answer because if we feel like we're winging it then we're probably winging it we should probably ask is there anybody left in the health department I mean a lot of departments are part of the state yeah <laughs> it, there's a lot of people there it's 
not the same feel as it had 15 years ago. I think Steve will attest to that. It, it depends which section you're talking about right now. And one of the other problems is you, if you have a job title, you can switch from one section to the other, but that doesn't mean you're experiencing it. Right. And so they're, they're trying to flood holes. Right now, the subsurface is the same as it has been for years. Food is down. That is down. Um, public water is up to 55 people. Yeah. And private water has two people. There you go. Wow. Hmm. So That's all the wells we deal with, we have two people. And right. when we started out, the state had a field person down in Norwich for the southeastern part. They had a field person up in Mansfield for the northeast. Those divisions are all gone. And that's one of the reasons why the local health departments are basically reaching out to each other because we're not going to get the support from the state, so we have to do it amongst ourselves. We've also offered space in our office to one of our state epidemiologists. There's only, I think, five of them. Five. Out of January, there might be four. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> we have one that's you with go us. Out. And we you know, welcome her there, but she helps us if we have a problem where we need an epidemiologist, which is good. Um, we've just worked out a deal with the town of East Haddam and the town of East Hampton where we're going to have an AmeriCorps worker based in our office to work on the opioid crisis. So that's uh, another benefit with the town. Mm -hmm. and something that uh, John Fournier and Tony McCabe have worked on from, from down here. We look forward to that. That should be starting up very soon. I think if I, I could, um, I, I think that probably from what we've heard, um, there's certainly the, the main things is customer service. Um, obviously, uh, I think what Zach brought up was the points of the, the difference in, obviously, the personnel you've had over the years. Some of them are easier to work with than others. Um, and I think that that goes back probably to management to make sure that whoever you do have in the field out there are, are given customer service. Um, you know, we're all just trying to do our job out there. Uh, I don't care whether it's a guy doing the sewer work or somebody working in the restaurant. Uh, they're just trying to do their job. And, and, and obviously the health district is doing their job. But I think we all have to treat each other courteously and, and respectfully. And, and, I, and we've seen it all ways. And, uh, and I think that if we can, you know, if we do have a problem with, with someone, if we can get that back to management so that you know it. So obviously if you see one, it's, it's one thing. If you see 10 coming in, it's something else. And, um, and then obviously, you know, somebody needs to do something different or, and obviously we're also looking at it from the standpoint of, you know, if there's a particular individual that's, that's not cooperating with Chatham Health, we want to know about it because we want to, we want it to work. And, um, and we want it to work for, obviously, the, the businesses that are out there. Um, it's important to us. That's what, you know, that's what we do. I mean, we're trying to promote business. We're trying to make it as easy as possible to run a business. And I think that, you know, that's why uh, this board has been, you know, putting this together and, and bringing it to Emmett's attention and bringing it to the Board of Selectmen's attention. You know, we, all we do is just advise. That's, that's all. We just want to bring information to the people who, basically can do something, but we want to make sure they're aware of it. Um, and so when we have good things going on, we try to get that to them. And when we have something that we think needs attention, we'd like to get that to them. And, and I think that, you know, from what I've seen uh, at this meeting and others, that certainly if, if Chatham could have somebody who is basically in this office three days a week so that we do have someone that we can say goes with this office. And uh, I mean, I feel like, you know, and maybe you think. Sitting there. <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> sitting. <laughs> because quite honestly, we can't afford to have people sit there if there's no. nothing going on. If you need, you know, certain office hour, that's, that's possible. But basically, if they get their paperwork done and they're needed in the field, I really want them out there doing public health. Yes, and, and I think we realize that too, but we'd also like to know that on, on Tuesday mornings, that's the day that, that someone's going to be in the office and that we can basically have access because right now, wh where do we get 
questions answered. And, and I think that have somebody who is, we feel, I mean, I just feel like Steve is in that office and, and Liz is in a particular office. And, and, and I think that, uh, I know you, you maybe you disagree. Right. right. But so what I would say is problems, always let your, your board of health member know, let Emmett know. Yeah. You can also let the director know at any time. And terms of if you're not getting service on something you think you need service on, the main office, there's always somebody there to answer that phone. Even when we're not there, I know because it rolls over and it gets me if it's in the middle of the night. <laughs> so um, you, you can call that number to the main office and we can get somebody on it if there's something of, of critical importance. Well, I think, you know, it's typically you've got a plan and, and you have questions uh, about how a plan could be done. And uh, or if it comes back with, let's say, questions on that plan that uh, this isn't working, then what are our alternatives? What, what, what can we do to make this an approvable plan? And sometimes that takes face-to-face uh, -face kind of stuff in order to... It does. And uh, it depends on the uh, complexity of the plan. Because sometimes if it's an engineer's design, it really has, it's a discussion that has to be had with the engineer. Yeah. But you're right. And we, we certainly welcome that conversation. Yeah. And I think that that's what we need. I mean, you want to? Yeah, I just, just want to make a few comments. Uh, over the past couple of years, we've seen a lot of, uh, it's hard to put it, inconsistency in terms of what we're getting. When we had Liz here, it was very consistent. We knew exactly what was going to happen. Who's going to be here and when? Then it kind of fell apart. And we didn't have any predictable schedule where we knew someone was going to be here. The people who were here didn't necessarily get the level of support they needed. And they ran into problems and confusion, and at least in one case, simply left. You know, threw up their hands and walked away. Uh, we have to know that we're going to have service it's dependable in there, that it's going to be present, it's going to be consistent, it's going to be have clarity to what it's doing, and it's going to have the support behind it. And I think those are the questions that we're really looking at here today. But we're really focusing largely on the food service and the vendors and perhaps even some of the subsurface work we do, the sewage and whatnot. It's a hell of a lot more to uh, what you're offering than just that. Absolutely. And that's, only, that's the tip of the iceberg. Uh, if you look at Everbridge, not every town uses Everbridge. We use it consistently and heavily. Board of Ed more than anyone. But here on the other side, we use it as well. That's a seven or $8,000 a year proposition. If we have to buy it ourselves, you give it to us. It makes a big difference in the cost. If you're going to look at even money, we want to keep that in mind. That there's an extra little peak here that we're going to have to deal with. And I'm going to tell you something. We're going to have Everbridge because it serves us well, and we want it. Uh, there's issues with mutual aid with the various towns that are other members. We're very dependent upon mutual aid for our ambulance service, for our fire service. These are our friends, the ones we work with, the ones we know right now. I, I don't want to lose that because regaining it is going to be tough. Uh, a couple of other things. I've got some letters here I commented on earlier, and I just, I'd like to read them to you because they touch on other things that you're doing. And this is from the property owners of uh, Lake Hayward. Uh, dear Mr. Lyman, Thursday, November 1, Don Mitchell, Director of Health, contract, contacted me from our discussion. I understand the town of East Haddam is considering leaving Chatham Health and uh, joining Connecticut River. As Secretary of the Property Owners Association, Lake Hayward, I want to take the opportunity to tell you about the benefits Chatham Health District has provided. Don has been a champion of weekly water testing for the three beaches at Lake Hayward. With our voluntary water collection, CHG has provided an umbrella of services. They include transport, samples to uh, Middletown Weekly, coordination of beach closures, reporting back to the E. coli levels of samples taken. Uh, and I'm just going to touch on some of this. Forwards photos, questions to the state for further explanation of water conditions. We're extremely thankful for the thorough septic system program covering new properties, additions and property sales. You know, 
I'm the guy that gets the, when nobody's in the office, I hear about it. I'm also the guy that gets it when some system fails. And they come back to me and say, well, wasn't that system inspected properly? Wasn't it done and brought up to snuff? It's very important. And I can tell you, I do get those uh, beatings. People come to us and say, you know what? It wasn't done right. The town's responsible. You should have inspected it more carefully. Uh, we want to make sure it's done properly. Uh, with 400 homes and summer properties close to the lake, uh, many built in the first half of the 20th section, century, the uh, Chatham Health uh, Septic System Program helps us to keep our lake clean. Uh, keeps the lake clean, beautiful, healthy. It's a little bit different from the rest of what uh, we hear about. And I can repeat that with uh, the Lake Association. This is from Felicia Tenza and Randy Miller. We worked the Chatham Health District and Don Mitchell regularly in e recent years, both in questions regarding our residents, behalf of the lake communities of East Haddam. It's to support the many services they provide in a professional manner. I uh, greatly appreciate that Don and his team do not cut corners. They do things right for the right reasons. Without their continuous commitment to enhancing our local area, health standards uh, and enforcement in our communities would easily diminish. Don is consistent, responsive to inquiries that we make, available to attend meetings. We hardly endorse the Chatham Health District. The service level that the lakes are getting is terrific. And that's something that's fairly unique to us. And a health district from another area with another orientation might not provide that as well. And the one that, that impressed me the most, a little bit long here, so I'll try to just jump through it. I'm sorry I couldn't attend tonight, but I submitted this letter uh, in reference to the topic of changing another health district. This is from Craig Mansfield, our emergency management. Um, and a little bit disappointed that EDC in researching other options did not reach out to consult with emergency management uh, as well as other town departments. Since joining the health district, East Haddon Emergency Management built an excellent working relationship with Chatham Health. They've taken the requirement of supporting emergency management function very seriously, shown in our ability to respond to different events over the last 13 years. Several years ago, Chatham Health created an emergency preparedness planning group. It consists of the district emergency management directors, several members of the Chatham staff. In the beginning, they came together on a regular basis and created the necessary checklists, templates, response plans, call trees, to be able to respond to health emergencies within each of our communities. Uh, after the creation of these response plans, the group looked to the equipment and supplies would be required. Quickly determined purchasing them would have been a substantial hit to East Adams' annual emergency budget. Uh, realizing the effect, Chatham stepped up, funded the purchase of the required supplies and equipment. The pre-planning proved invaluable almost immediately. A large section of the country was hit with the H1N1 virus. East Haddon Emergency Management was able to quickly take the, crea the created pandemic plan, work with Chatham Health, provide our residents with multiple flu clinics, reduce the spread of the virus. Um, and he goes on to speak of the Everbridge system. This is your mass notification. And it's a great system. We can draw a line in the town. And bingo, those are the people who are going to get called. We can identify people from the school community who need to be called. It's a terrific tool, a powerful one for us. We just can't afford to lose it. We're just too used to it. Um, Chatham Health is supporting East Haddam through the recovery phase from several weather events, provided training, participated in town's required annual exercises. Uh, in close, I can't speak of the many other functions Chatham Health provides the community. I can say that these are just a few examples of what Chatham has provided through the years. There's a whole lot more to Chatham than just, you know, the food services, the vendors, doing the, uh, the septic systems. And they're all part and parcel of what we get from them. And the deal is good. And when you look at the actual dollar cost, the comparable value, speaking of the uh, Connecticut River area, it's about comparable, 
except that we have to add on the cost of Everbridge now, which pushes it up considerably. And if dollars are the only answer, we need to be looking at Uncas or Ledge Light. They're half the cost for both uh, the, the Connecticut River area and Chatham. We need to look at the services. What are we getting from them? You know, what are we paying for? And what's the return on our investment? There's a whole lot more going on here than just the cost. And the big key right now is providing the service in a timely fashion that is really well directed with the support staff that they need, that the, whoever's on staff here, and knowing when we can depend on them being here, and knowing that they'll be consistent, and knowing that they're going to be fair about what they do. Laurie? I, I'd just like to say, from the perspective of East Town Ambulance, um, our mutual aids that Emmett mentioned and our working relationship as far as working with East Hampton, Colchester, and, and the surrounding towns. Those are our people. And when we look at what happened to our KX dispatch center, when people started jumping ship from KX and it dissolved, and we ended up having to go to a different dispatch agency in Valley Shore, we're not getting the service from them that we got from KX from our group of, that was familiar with us and that took good care of us and it was a great area. And, and that's why I would really be hesitant to go jumping ship real quickly to go someplace else where somebody might not have the familiarity and, and our group. It's always East Hampton, Colchester, East Tatum, all, all these towns that always work together and they do it fairly well. And I've always been impressed with what Chatham has offered to the town of East Chatham. So I, I, I'd feel much better if we stuck there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else out there to comment? Eric. So as you know, I've been a big proponent of getting out of Chatham for oh, you know as long as you can probably remember me speaking. Um, so I'm going to disagree with Mr. On a couple things. Um, as far as um, well, basically, let me start with Mr. Benjamin first. Because when we talk about having the same person in there all the time in the office and whatnot, mm -hmm. so if a person goes in there and applies for a subsurface septic system, okay, they approve it, it goes through zoning, gets approved, it's done, it's a done deal. That entity goes back months later, reapplies. It's another fee, the same fee that you paid at the initial mm -hmm. onset. Okay, that that it, it just I have a standing joke with Liz. Basically, I'll pay you five hundred bucks a year, and whether we do anything or not, it just it's going to go to that building fee. Um, now you're speaking of a business at this point. I'm, I'm speaking of a business, yeah. correct. Um, and again, my experience goes basically not to the food services, it's basically to the subsurface and to the wells and so forth. Mm -hmm. So just today, I mean, and probably I shouldn't be bringing it up now, but I had an appointment to have an inspection for a well today, one o'clock, no one showed. Mm -hmm. In stone, one o'clock. Not even a phone call. So when we talk about services, and again, I'm not going to say, Andy, you and I know each other, but, yeah, no, it's good. Um, well, this but John, you, let, you, you let come highly know. recommended you, mm -hmm. I mean, as far as your reputation and so forth, so I'm not, this is not personal. No, no, no but let this me know when you have something like that. This is, is basically business. with the entity. I, I, I think the town of East Haddam is much better served with an individual that can serve the town of East Haddam. I want that person in that office, regardless, and this is where I come to your comment, regardless of three days a week, we're going to pay six figures a year. I want that person sitting in that office 40 hours a week because I'm going to tell you something. I sit in my office and I don't make six figures. But if so, you, if you have a sanitarian, you're going to pay a sanitarian, but a sanitarian can't work unless they're working under a director of health. Okay. So you're going to pay a director an MD of health too. Or an MD. The MD is a possibility. Dave is hesitant. But don't look at it. I guess my point is, and again, I'm, this is not personal. No. This this comes from a dollars and cents point of view. We're paying six figures. I would much rather go back to the days, and I always use Wayne Green as as the example. 
He, he served this town and this community as a building inspector and a sanitarian, was knowledgeable immensely in both subjects, and served it with a great deal of integrity and a great deal of, of vested interest, if you will. He wasn't from this town, but he served it with a vested interest. He served it as an intelligent person. We've had other people come and go who have not had that, that sense of, of responsibility. So I just, I, again, I, I'm remiss if I never said anything because, again, I come to selectmen's meetings, you know, for, for years now, and have never um, said my piece in a, in, a, in a forum like this. Um, and you're right, I probably should have gone to Chatham directly and said, hey, here's my piece, and so forth, but. Um, Let me give you my cell number. <laughs> really like, um, but still, I'm speaking as a resident of the town of East Haddam. I want to be served as, as the town of East Haddam. When I call uh, Chatham Health or the building department, I want somebody there. I don't care what time of day it is. Within business hours. <laughs> Thank you very much. I just don't, I mean, the only thing I can say is yeah, going back to the this, way that and, things uh, were, you're going to be fucking with the state health department. You're pushing all the towns. You know, you're, that's killed your years. That may be the way we're going, but as far as my opinion is, let's let's hold out for as long as we possibly can, and then and then yeah, but you have do to, that knee jerk you have to realize that even before you can hold out, they have to approve it. So they have to approve it before you can even hold out. But maybe this is not a discussion for right now, yeah. and, and I don't want to waste anybody's right. time having a... But, I, but I, think, I think, you know, you, you brought up a point, and, and certainly the point of, of not keeping inspections and not showing up, which is the worst. It's and one again, thing... That's, if this is not the form maybe to no, bring that up, but no. it's a frustration that I have. That well, I think in general, though, it has... It, it isn't like you're the only one, Eric. And, no. and so I think that when we do have a situation like that, what do we do, Andy? Yeah. What what should we do when we we basically have somebody who doesn't show up at all that's, and no that's phone call? That's not a good thing. And Eric brought up a very valid point. If you had an appointment today and somebody didn't show up, then shame on us. That. that shouldn't be happening. So we apologize for that. And Donald will get into that tomorrow. But that, that shouldn't be happening. And if it's happening more than just today, then we're not doing our job, and that's that's unacceptable. As far as a manager of a town, not a first selectman. 23 years, I left here in 96, I've been older ever since. To get a sanitarian and to get a director of health, you're way more than you're paying now. I had a full-time sanitarian and we had an MD doing it. Mm -hmm. And you're talking at least 130,000. You're not paying that to, to chat about and you're getting all these other services. Portland, you guys, this is regional. So when you sign up to be a district health district, you're gonna get somebody from the district. You're not gonna get somebody from down the bridge right here. You should have office hours. No disputing that. Tommy Hebron had the number one chief sanitarian, and we went from 40 hours a week, which he enjoyed. And trust me, I agree with you because I enjoyed it. <laughs> right. And every time I call Steve, he's down here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm like, Steve, you're going to come to a staff meeting once a year? So <laughs> we get it, but he shouldn't, I don't know about the fee thing, he shouldn't be paying it. Application so fee. an application fee should be good for a year. Yeah. So you should not have to pay it yet. Which so that's I what I would want to know. Sense a little bit of dissatisfaction too. But are you willing to prorate? If we're going to pay six figures a year, are you willing to prorate for how much that person's in the office and doing the job? We'll work with your representative on the board. Everybody, every town that belongs to the district has a say at that table. And as, as Don said, you should have a designated person. And we did have a problem with person, Liz leaving, and that person took over, didn't stay. So we apologize for that. We fired him. And it's going to take a little time. But you should have repetitive service from the same person. And we're looking to do that. It just, we had a little bit of an issue in the last six months. Mm -hmm. We went out, people didn't apply, and we re, we re went out, and we got somebody finally to, to come in. Um, having six towns, we've had issues in Colchester similar. We've repaired those, and they're up and running. We, East Hampton, I'm not here to call her a problem children, but <laughs> East Hampton's a constant moving target with many different facets that we're always putting fires up. Incomplete plans, hey, Chatham Health's holding up economic development. We look into it, and all of a sudden, the plan's got the well in two different areas, and a property line was in the first plan's gone on the second plan. So nobody loves, Bob Kasner, nobody loves a regulatory agency. 
but we take the hit for a lot of stuff. But like he shouldn't be paying a double fee, so we're going to look into that. That should not happen. It's good for a year. And I'm going to tell you, as the board chair for the past four years, I've not really heard too many people not making their appointments. So that's concerning to me here as the chairman of the board. The only thing I would ask on that fee was was one of them <clears throat> plan review and one was the actual subject permit. Because you get a plan review and that's... Cool. That would have been a plan review that would have gone before being bid. That was a plan review. And then when there's the actual installation, there's... Well, when I have my engineer saying that's BS because we already done that but whatever we're not going to go there no thank you for letting us know. could i just make just to follow up on a little bit where yours and i think too that when you have an inspector start with a plan that that inspector stays with the plan and also when that inspector has worked with the plan they also do the field and they don't do one of the inspections in the field and then we have somebody else who comes out in the field that is awkward for everybody and we don't agree and then where are we and when then we're upset so but if you stay with the same person who reviews it and the same person who basically comes out into the field and does one I don't care where it's scarification or, or the basically the final Whatever it is, we need to stay with the same inspector. And Sometimes it would be so helpful. Slows things down. For instance, if you start a job with me and I do the scarification and I'm at training when you're looking for a final, rather than wait for me, somebody else can go down and that speeds up the process. Yep. So we don't want a hard and fast but As Jim said, we're, when somebody sure starts with it, it the intention is for that same person to stay with it. If there's an overlapping where a job started with somebody who left, then obviously a second person picks it up. But it's Jim and Nancy are trying to make sure that one person stays with the project. But when it comes out in the field, obviously, if somebody's looking for something that I started and I say I'm not around, you know, some, somebody else can fill in. And I think that that's, you know, that's totally understandable. Yeah. But if yeah, basically, if you're in the office and you're available, it just helps for consistency to stay with the same person. And I try person. to tell people when things are on the phone sometimes to make sure that you ask for me because I'm the one, I'm the one you're talking to. Right. Or, and it's just the idea, though, that it makes it easier so when we're out there, we're not starting from scratch when we're on a final. And, and with the efficiencies of modern technology, entire files could be sent to us in seconds. And I can look at them on my phone. Most <laughs> contractors have our cell numbers, which are not supposed to give out, and we give them out routinely just because we want people to call us because if I'm going from A to B and you're in between, I want to hit you on the way through. Right. It, it makes it better for all of us, that's for sure. Yeah. And that was my question. When somebody like Eric or John Q, business has an issue, where do they go? Do they go... Chatham Health, do they go to Emmett? Do they go to the economic? We need to streamline and get an, a process in place where people can get things so they can be taken care of instead of, you guys, you wouldn't have found out about Eric unless no, he was here tonight. Would Andy have heard it? Probably not. He wouldn't have been aware of it. Definitely not. Okay. Yeah, so we just need to make sure that there's a clear process If for there's people. something that keeps being a repetitive problem, I mean, yes, still let me know, but then let your Board of Health representative know, mm -hmm. because he's going to take it before the whole board. Um, but generally, you know, the buck stops here. It should, it should come to the director. And I just have a one getting into revenues. Um, the pump out fee has always been an irritant uh, for every yes, homeowner. Me too. It's going away. It's going away. So it is off of the. So it's, uh, deal today. Come on. it's gone. Okay, because that has certainly been so an irritation right. point. And and never right to begin with. <laughs> yes, right. And uh, I've been working on that for some time, and it will be gone. Good. Okay, because I think that that. And, and just so you transparency, you guys know, <clears throat> we wanted that to go away. We we're hoping the salon regulation was going to come into place to offset the revenue to keep the district running the way it is. But, we're not there yet, but we understand it's a burden. We don't agree with it. Okay. And, and 
just a, on your, your whole revenue side, do you feel that you're going to be stable uh, with the fee structures, or yes, is we're going to be having a, a meeting tomorrow at the Board of Health? Some of the fees are going to be changing for those new classifications on the restaurants. Yep. A uh, number of the fees will probably raise minimal amount, like five bucks, something like that. Some of them won't change at all. Um, but just so you know, for example, our B one hundred A's that we're talking about, we're we're talking about sixty dollars or forty five, even if they go to sixty five and fifty. Back at River Area, they're a hundred. They're su substantially more. I mean, we could even put the permit to discharge in and still be less. But we're not going to have that permit to discharge fee. Um, the per capita you mentioned for them was eleven dollars. Uh, officially with the state, they're eleven forty. Uh, so they may decide they're going to lower, but they're not lower. They're a good amount more, twenty nine cents more per capita right now. Mm -hmm. So that a little disingenuous for them to say that's their fee when it's not their fee. <laughs> they said that's their going to be their fee for the coming year. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what they said. We're all faced with the state of Connecticut. You know, there's a statute that says they're going to give you this much. That's uh, unknown lately. You know, sometimes they don't follow that. We've lost uh, some grants. Not that the Chatham Health District has lost. They've been taken away. That was revenue that we could count on in multiple areas. And it would support Ever Bridge for the health nurse and a lot of other areas with the financial situation of the state. It's a trickle down to the health district. How much of the percentage of your income is state generated? How much of that per capita? Well, let's see, we've got about a little over a hundred thousand that comes in on the per capita from the state, and then probably got another fifty thousand or so in, in other grants. So fifteen percent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's not. I mean, basically, it's the towns that fund this, and yeah. uh, it's not this. It's not the state that's funding this. That is correct. Um, Just one more question. What happens if one more town drops out? We're gonna the rest of the remaining towns are gonna be left with the burden of the you know, Yeah, well uh, I'm also gonna be left with the burden of firing someone. Well we don't know. It could it could should, should answer the question appropriately tonight. Mm -hmm. We don't know what that would do. It could dissolve Which it. Which is fair. It, it could dissolve it. Mm -hmm. Or we would have to re reorganize it and um, look at probably lay off and some help to if that's if the other towns wanted to remain right I mean, they, they if one town were to leave i think other towns would, would um, consider their options at the time they would weigh their options i guess like i said i don't know if they came <coughs> out and i'm not trying to sell it it's just these are the facts that i supply craig <coughs> mansfield wrote that letter and i'm not siding with one to promote or demote it's just a fact east had them change their dentist the dentist is a regional emergency mm -hmm. district area to align with um, the other towns in the health districts other than Colchester because they're in a different one because of where they are. So a lot of stuff happened when we formed it as, as Steve said and, and to even if the state starts to regionalize we did this to be kind of set up so we kind of lock you into the thing but all those things would have to be considered if one town were to leave okay what do we do with our demos regioning where we're gonna where's the other health district because when things come down from the state, they, they go through a lot of times as EOCs, which is emergency, you know. And if you're not aligned, it's, 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 it affects your town in different ways. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't weigh your options or your, uh, your, your chance to move. But there's a lot of other moving parts that East Tatum has to look at and then the other surrounding towns. So to be quite honest, it could break the district, but if that would be the worst case here if it didn't. The other towns, like myself, I'm in Hebron. I got one right next door. Um, I'm staying because I want to see it work. We've got a plan to change and make it better and try to deal with the concerns. I have some concerns. Some of the other towns have some concerns that have been taken care of. So we're down here to take care of East Haddam. We hope you guys stay. But that's, an, that's a, a valid question. But I don't think we have an answer tonight for that, do we, Don? I think it's no, I wouldn't expect one. You can't answer. Yeah. I don't well, I, I will answer. tell you this. There's even with Killingworth um, going out and saying to other health districts, make a play for us. They they asked Chatham. And I said I would take it to the Board of Health. I said, but personally, I said it doesn't make sense. It's on the other side of the river. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, quite a separation and it doesn't make good logistical sense. 
Um, when somebody takes them, they'll get $15,000 for that first year, which will let somebody drop their rate, and then the next year they're not going to get that 15000 and bang, it goes up again. And then the office hours went down. In the meantime... And the day, there was no other sanitary backup from the district. It's in we're the in meantime, there. Lake, 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 Lake Health District was asked if they wanted Killingworth, and they said, we just expanded by five towns. We can't get sanitariums that we need right now. We're not interested in getting anybody. Um, when places expand rapidly, they're going to be in that thing, and believe me, even if they've got money, they can't just grab sanitariums. They're not growing on trees. So it's, it's not that easy. Um, when you talk about our emergency preparedness, he's got them as well set up and prepared for within our management area. They would be going to another different one. Everything would be new, different. Good, bad, ugly, I have no idea. But um, some of the other towns that have joined PRAHD um, have found their hours gone to crap. Adam, East, or rather, Haddam has two days a week for two hours. That's not just in the office, that's office. <coughs> Chester has two days a week for three hours. Same deal, oh, and one Tuesday. So you're talking about, you know, will you have a fanny in the seat all these times? You're not going to have it with these others. And you shouldn't be fooled into thinking that. But we're looking to provide as much coverage as possible. And it may surprise you to find that we've got, you know, five people in town working at one time. Um, there's a DI outbreak of some kind at, say, chest elm or something. We're there. We have to be there, of course. We have to take food histories. We have a lot of work to do. So when these things come up, we're there. Don had a question. Yeah, you know, we're looking at <clears throat> cost. So we always got to look at best value for the dollar, not just the cost itself. Um, is there a self-assessment of performance that you could share with us? For example, you know, I'm listening to how problematic the staffing is. So it's clear that we're not doing everything 100% that we should be doing. For example, the, uh, the federal and their state mandates on inspections and, and how many times the food establishment needs to be inspected that year. How well are we doing with the, with the staffing that currently exists? We're, we're are we at 60%, yeah. 50%? You're 60 know? plus. You know, so it, it's, it's a concern. Yeah. And where's the resolution? <clears throat> if I, part of the resolution is under the new FDA standard, they'll be less required. So or keeping around the same number, we're going to be more inclined to be meeting. I think the FDA standard is a little more realistic than, than the other. So we'll, we will look better percentage-wise. Will we be 100%? I hope so. We'll have to wait and see. I, I think standardization of fees and what your fee structure is is going to be an important. Um, in some inspections, it's <coughs> considerably over the last year. I can give you an example. Pool inspections yep. were $60, yep. down to 100 Yep. 70%. That's because they, yeah, that's, they were flat for forever. Well, you know, I, I understand why, but well, it's got to be justified. How, that's how health districts get in trouble, too. Right. They don't change their fees for 10, 15 years. And then when they change them, they hurt. We're trying to look at that now and say, rather make small increments a little more frequently than a big one every Make them visible so that where people can look it up and know ahead of time what it's going to be and, and not find which, out that it changed when it happens. Uh, also, how do, you, how do you find the district fees on some other districts? Um, compatible. You our website, close. you can find it. Yeah. Try finding it for one you're considering. The uh, availability of personnel, and, and that's been a thing here in town, is coming up with some sort of schedule. Uh, you know, if it's only going to be Tuesday and Thursday, that's fine if it's posted and, and the person's available. And, it, and they don't necessarily have to be sitting in the office. Every one of us that has a business does business on the cell phone. Sure. That's where everything's done because you can't afford to sit in the office. So, but establishing standards and, and maintaining them. 
it's going to be important yeah, for the integrity of you guys in town. Hours too, we need to, we need to get yeah. together with Jim uh, Ventress and uh, AMC and talk about yeah. what works uh, best. Uh, Anything else? Starting to get a little late here. No. Eddie. I thought this was a great session. Thanks for having this. Huh. Um, I would like to hear from other health districts as to, we've heard from Chatham Health what they're proposing and your point about scope of services, we should definitely have a written scope of services mm -hmm. to hold whoever the health district is to the, their feet to the fire. Um, I'm sorry, Eddie. No, no, no problem. But we heard this three years ago. We've had our issues, and it's going to get better. We're, we're correcting. We're going to solve the employment problem. We heard it three years ago, and it hasn't changed. Are we going to sit here next year and hear it again? Uh -huh. um, and and, and I, I don't want to see Chatham Health District go last. But the town needs to be served. The townspeople need to be served. If, if, if a business is going to open and they need to get their health permit signed off, they need to get their health permit signed off. They don't want to hear that, well, we can't find an employee. Yeah. So I, I know time is of the essence, but I, I behoove you to have the other health districts that you're considering come in and, and make a presentation as well as to, to what they can offer. Everbridge is a very important yeah. issue. Um, and, I, and I don't know how you solve that problem. Well, oh, both districts have that. Both district, it's available in, in the in, and that, in the and too. The price line that's on for Everbridge that we have on our list is one that's shared by six towns. So it's we don't. No, it's we not our whole. Portland, line. There's a couple. Um, if I may correct you, yep. I'm not trying to be. No, no, no. Please do. Absolutely. There's a couple right. towns in the Chatham Health District that have their own police departments, so they don't they don't use it at all. Portland being one of them, and I think I don't think Colchester uses it either. And we. But that's not our whole nut, though. That whole nut is not for us. It's, it's split up. No, but it is something that we negotiated down a huge amount. Yeah, I think you would. That that, that is what it would cost us. Go out on your own, and, but that could be re yeah. reviewed. But, but it's available. It's available. As we're just saying that's one of the yeah. monetary services we give you for being in the district that other towns look the other way because they don't benefit by. Mm. Right. You need to look at what other districts have because they may not have it. They may not have anything, or they may. I think what Ed has to bring to the table here is that, you know, we should have other districts come in as well and talk to us about what they offer and what services they have. And I think if we're comparing apples to apples, that makes sense as far as the scope of work that Jim has brought up. Mm -hmm. I do know that we've talked to, I was former um, head of the EHBA prior to Jess, and I had plenty of situations and plenty of times where businesses came to us in regards to the Taste of East Haddam when we first started it as well as other scenarios. Myself, I would GC the building here in town and had to deal with the health district, and it was a very terrible situation. It really was. It was awful. Um, and not that I didn't know what I was doing, because I certainly didn't, but the kind of customer service, I've been in customer service and sales for a long time, and I have never dealt with somebody who was so awful. Um, and I know that there have been other people in town and other businesses in town, and I even know businesses today who have said, contractors who have said, they do not want to do business in East Haddam because they have to deal with Chatham Health. So whatever that scenario is, I understand we're fixing it. But the bottom line is, is that as the Economic Development Commission in town, we have been asked to put together what do we see as which way should we go. This is not something that we just said we have a, you know, we're going to take up a crusade here. We want businesses to open in East Haddam, and we have to make it easy for those businesses to open. And part of it is dealing with the regulation. And of those regulations, the Chatham Health is part of it. So in order to make that work, we have to find a happy medium here to have partners with the economic development that happens in town. And that goes through the town and land use and zoning and Chatham Health and the selectman's office. We all have to work together to build our town. And part of building our town is to make it comfortable, easy, a pleasure to deal with and open up a business. And we can't make it difficult for people. So whether it's Chatham Health or Land Use or the Selectman's Office or Economic Development Commission, we can't put roadblocks in people's way. And that's one thing that we really do have to concentrate on, making sure that we've got the best 
partners in building our town. So I strongly encourage all of us to consider Ed's um, idea to bring you know another health district in that we're looking at. Obviously, we all know who we're talking about, but they should come in and we should have the same discussion, the same people in the room, and then we can have an intelligent, you know, figure out which way is the better way to do it. But I don't think that this is something that we should just keep doing. And we've, you know, I mean, it's the definition of insanity, folks. We know what that is. We keep doing the same thing, and it's still not working. So we've got to figure this out. And if Chatham's going to come around and fix it, great. But if somebody can do it better for the same amount of money, I think it's worth talking about, and I think it's worth looking at. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, here's, here's the problem that I have. First place, I want to say that this is the really the first time it's come to head where I've been dragged in to say, let's talk about something. Maybe you guys should have talked to me in 2015, 2016, 2017 for someone that has to work with daily, daily business uh, with them. So this is, you know, starting now. So we've all clearly identified staff time is the problem. Without staff time, we're in trouble. So that they said they're going to deal with it, believe me, I'll be on top of them holding their fire. If someone's not down there at a certain period of time that we agree upon, I'll make the phone call myself. Because I understand that is very important. Because it's nothing better, and I'm not doing too well in the building department either. You know, we're not staff time there either. So I'm answering a lot of questions on my own. It works great when you have all three partners right there to work with somebody. Now, when it comes to a food service plan for a restaurant, those answers are going to be the same no matter what health district you get. You have to have the same components on that plan no matter which district you work with. So that answer is going to be the same whoever you've interviewed. Food service plan is a food service plan. Things about this deck, you go through it page by page. I know because I've done them. I also know from my previous business I've seen it all uh, when it comes to restaurants and operations and health. So that being said, don't want to interview people and say, well, what are you going to provide with us? They're going to say the same thing, well, we're going to provide you. But they're not going to change what a food service plan is. They're not going to change what a septic system installation is. It's all math, it's all science, it's all, you know, plan, plan preparation. Um, I also, you know, don't want to sit through here and, look, and listen to song and dance from two, three, four other districts. If you want to say to them, submit us what your standard contract with the other town is and your mobile services, and you want to get together and you want to call myself in and your group and collect men and we look at those standard contracts, see what the service is provided. We don't have to sit down night after night, listen to song and dance. I'd be more than willing to do that. Right now, I think our key thing is level of service, provide time and service. Well, Jim, if I could interrupt you, that that is you know, the administrative part of it. We also have where the it's in the field part of it, and that's the part where we seem to see the weaknesses. It's the and I don't think it's you know as you say a septic system's a septic system. Right. Guess what? But I think when it comes to going out in the field and and basically the personality that comes out in the field and the cooperativeness that's out in the field, I think that's where we say can see there could be some improvements made. Well, I think you made that loud and clear tonight. And I think that you've, you know, you've got the chairman and you've got the staff here. Yeah. And it's loud and clear. And I think, and, and it's certainly, we all appreciate, uh, you know, Andy, you coming, Don, you coming, <clears throat> Steve, you're being here. I think that this has given us the opportunity where we can show you some of the concerns and, and, and basically see from what it's like from the, the business association, what it's like from economic development situations, and so that you can see what we deal with and so that you can hopefully make the improvements on your side that will make it easier for all of us. And uh, it will make it easier uh, in the office. It will make it easier hopefully in the field. And, uh, and I think that uh, I would certainly personally and certainly as the board appreciate you coming tonight and, uh, and being willing to share with us and, uh, and hopefully we've given you some ideas. I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I just want to thank everyone who came here tonight. Uh, when I put this together, I had anticipated it was basically going to be the economic development and Chatham Health. And perhaps the selectmen as well, and that's going to be all of it. It's turned into quite a bit more than I'd ever anticipated. 
And I think we've uh, brought up a number of issues that absolutely have to be addressed. I think everybody's much more aware of what's going on at this point. And uh, I want to thank you. Uh, any more comments out there? No, I just, I, I'm not here as a salesman for Chatham House. No. I represent a town myself. I'm born and raised here, so I have a fond spot in my heart for mm -hmm. Chatham. You guys run the town of Chatham. You've got to do what's in your best interest. As the chairman of the board, and you sit on the board with me, mm -hmm. we're, we, we thought, at least Bob, when you started with your list at the beginning of the meeting, I think not to pick on Mr. Jezik, but he was one of the issues that we were dealing with, and I thought we came down and rectified that back then. So I'm not trying to throw a last minute sales pitch, but I, I kind of thought we listened, we heard, and we fixed that. And now we have another issue with personnel, and we're willing to, we've already taken steps to fix that. Um, with that being said, I got to disagree with the business because it goes both ways. And I'm not saying that you probably didn't have a bad situation. But as the chairman of the board, I've also defended Militia Zebra and sticking up for a business in East Hampton that said we held them up and we're ruining economic development and they never submitted a permit. So we can't hold somebody up if they don't. So it goes both ways. And, we, and we're getting that kind of stuff too. And that was publicized in the newspaper. And, and I personally had to call her, who I consider a friend, and say, Melissa, that's not, not really the case here. I said, if you look at a little bit in front of this, we, we really... He was using an engineering firm, and there was some miscommunication. They never submitted. He was frustrated with the process, but we, where I'm going with this is we're not having a lot of, and Emmett, you're at the meetings, Don and Steve. Correct me if I'm wrong. If, if East Haddam is our problem, then we need to focus down here, and you'll get my commitment now that I'm hearing these types of problems. Because mm -hmm. I'm not dealing with these in Hebrew. You know, and I get 10,000 people over there, and I'm not having these issues, and I, and I really... Sincere when I say I don't see Steve that often. I mean, he, he shows up in the morning, gets in the car, checks the office, then he's gone. So if that's going on here, we got to fix it. Well, it sounds like just give us Steve, we'll be all. I think. But it's just it's just I'm in it with you guys in another municipality. Yeah. I talked to Portland. They're willing to, to, to stay. I talked to East Hampton. They've had some wrinkles in the road on both sides of the fence with some uh, overzealous contractors that weren't really supplying stuff that we could even make an approval on. Stuff that they didn't, so they put in, I don't mean to go into particulars, but they're putting a new dollar store and they never even came with us with a well diagram and they went open. I'm like, that's our fault. So it's it's a give and take. Yes. And, and we're not pointing fingers. We're no matter who or when or when you bring it to us, we'll hit the ground running. And we've been dealing with a contractor up in East Hampton. I think he's finally seen that. But we were getting we were getting hauled in by the, the council up there and these developers that we're no good and we're but we sat down calmly and professionally and we went through it piece by piece and said, you know, hey, we really didn't get what we needed. Here's the first print, here's the second one. We don't want to point your fingers, but so we're dealing with a little bit of that too, but not to where we want anybody else to leave the district. And, and I personally, from Hebron, would love to have you guys stay. But if it's not working out for you or you or, or, or you or you or you, you, you got to weigh those options. But I don't know, if, and I'm not picking on Don, but I can because he's under me here. <laughs> we, do have, we do have a standard. Yeah. And with the food service, we did have a problem with that. But I'm under the impression we corrected that and we get a report. I mean, we were close to 90% uh, a year ago. So... We brought somebody in, we put somebody in there full time. Yep. We were really concerned about the ones that were failing, not having a repeat inspection, so we made sure that we did that more than, than just the average inspections. But now with the fees, the change in the regulations, the visits are going to be less, so it'll, it'll even out. But we and, stepped that and, way up. And the person that we've got to come in is strong in food, recognize that we needed more strength there. So the report card is we're financially much more stable. Yep. We hired new employees. The food inspections are...